Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rich. And what's today? It's Super Fun Sunday. And what's it gonna be? It's gonna be super fun. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Bernie writes in. Frankenstein. Render like writes in. All right, the lighting in here is already driving me nuts. I'm gonna turn off my above light. Let me pause this. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna have to kind of keep the phone at an angle to avoid the glare on the um, page because I have two desk lamps um, on my drafting table. But okay, so we looked at this piece and uh, if you haven't checked out the previous two videos that I did as we sort of go through this book preparing to actually start, start to extrapolate some of these ideas, um, look below in the description box and I will have a playlist of these that you can check out and watch all back to back. So anyway, yeah, what we're doing is we're just kind of like getting our feet wet and looking at this work. Um, and then I'm going to try to show how to do some of the techniques that I see in here. Let's pull out little areas. I'll show the example of it and then um, kind of give you an idea of what I think he's doing. Um, this is nib work, meaning like a crow quill on what looks to be fairly large illustration board. So I'm going to guess it's probably like, a, man, it could even be a four or five ply board, like thick board, like illustration board. Um, it looked like the dimensions on a lot of these, like the paper was, um, oh gosh, what was the dimension of the paper? I know that the active art size was about 11 by 16. So pretty much filling up a regular comic board, but there was a couple of inches of space around it. So maybe 14 by 21 or something was the actual board size. And he could have trimmed those. Um, so anyway, I'll, let me grab like a little pointer. I'll point out some things. So he's doing some real nice stuff where he actually will drop out like lines that connect. You see right here. Um, and then also like uh, on the bridge of the nose, the lines just go like this and there's no sort of line that comes down. Um, to indicate the form, and he did it here too. It's a really cool effect. He doesn't close a lot of these either, like where you might be tempted to actually put like a line that goes here. A lot of this stuff is open, even on here on this side. So I'm looking to the phone trying to point, but um, like right there. Um, really cool rendering on the hand. And again, check out my Patreon too, because I've been showing um, unpublished uh, pieces, some prelim marker, not marker, but uh, brush drawings that he did. And uh, today I'm actually gonna post um, a small thumbnail that he did that would look like like maybe getting down the idea of um, a piece. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, okay, so focus my phone. So it always wants to fight me. Man, this is such a beautiful piece. This is like, man, just gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And again, we talked about like the abstract, um, sort of reads on this stuff like like this area right here but then if you pull back I'm gonna focus it again you look it starts to blend in pretty good and it just all of a sudden looks like oh it could be the indication of a like a hill that goes up back there maybe some um, uh, like clouds or sm smoke uh, again looking through my phone's a little tricky and then you can see kind of like hides like little things in here like it could be like a face of some sort and there's like little figures and stuff that he sort of suggests which is kind of fun um, in the art and then uh, the pouring the rain f effect is really cool really really nicely done and uh, let me pause this for one sec I've got a cat crying okay they don't like to be locked out of the office but if I have the door open then I'm gonna have a bunch of ambient noise going on in other rooms of the house so anyway, but uh, yeah, this is a really, really beautiful piece. Um, and we're really starting to get into um, some of the more complex pieces that he did. We may not be able to get through this book today, but this is going to be the end of the series for now. Um, so we'll hustle through. I, I really love the leaves or like little flowers on these um, branches too. It's really nice. Like how they kind of spiral down and just really, really beautiful stuff. Very well thought out. Um, you know, we spoke... Uh, yesterday about the influence of like Franklin Booth on his stuff and Joseph Clement Cole and uh, yeah some really really good stuff oh man the monster he's reading a book <laughs> it's like what a monster can't read a book I like the little um little white dots in the tree there and I did I actually found a pretty decent scan that I could tell um, how he did it and um, these the little white dots in there and there's 
very, very thick brush lines that he runs through and then um, his thinner pen lines and uh, creates that kind of um, reverse pattern in there. Again, let's look at the further read of this. Pull back on there, I'm gonna try to tilt the book so I can get some of the glare off. Um, but yeah, just a really, really beautiful balance of value. Man, that is so nice. So this is a weird idea that I had many, many years ago. I'm just gonna throw it out there. You tell me if you think it's cheesy or if it would be cool. But I thought a long time ago, because one of the first monster movies that I ever saw, and it really scared me bad, was my dad took me to Nosferatu when I was a kid um, at some like art house movie theater. And it was probably an old movie at the time. I, I'm sure, I don't think it was new. Um, cause <laughs> I don't know what year it was actually made, um, but but uh, how crazy would it be if I did Bram Stoker's Dracula, like black drawing style, an adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula? Like, would it be cheesy and too much like, oh, this guy's trying to do rights in and da 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 da? I mean, I would do it in my own style. There would there would definitely be nods to this, and again, I'm a big fan of a lot of the stuff that influenced Bernie um, to do this, but. Could could a Dracula book like this exist? Does it have a place in the world? Or is it like lame? So anyway, it's just a thought. Like I said, this isn't anything new. I've I've thought about it for many years, at least eight or nine, um, where I was like, man, that would be kinda cool to just do Dracula. And I I'm under the impression that the the book is public domain, but I don't know what that means exactly. Does that mean that I could do, because there's so many reprints. I was looking on like Amazon and tons of people have reprinted the book in all sorts of abridged formats and for kids and man, they've really like sliced and diced it all, all kinds of different ways, which kind of leads me to believe that it's just floating out there. And I know it, it varies in different countries, but if anyone has any insight on that, let me know. And then, like I said, would there, would you guys be interested in me doing that? It's tempting. I'm telling you be really fun and it would be it would it would be really cool because it kind of circles back to all the things that sort of inspired my imagination which was H.R. Giger and the alien stuff really freaked me out as a kid and then seeing Nosferatu as a kid and and uh just all it all kind of ties together in a fun way but anyway like I said it might be cheesy where it's like you know it's a lot of effort to put into a project because it would probably take like five years um but uh, like on the side, just start working on those um, and uh, release it. Because I think, you know, it would be a really cool coffee table book. <laughs> a nice hard cover. I could do like a Kickstarter for it once I have it like, you know, three quarters of the way done. If Kickstarter even exists in 2023. <laughs> but uh, anyway, all right, so we'll get back to this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see if you can almost kind of see your Mia. Uh, try to get away from the glare because these are black and white scans and not full color you can't see the brush strokes as well god the glare in here just drives me nuts so i'm trying to hold the book and show you let me see if i can do it up here so if you look right here do you see those thick patches those are single strokes the ones that are coming up and down okay so what he did is this is white he took his croquil and did like lots of lines and and got a nice pattern like a crosshatch the trisket as I call it so it went this way and then up and down then he took a thicker brush and kind of blocked it in to leave those little white dots that's the technique there I'll show it like actually in real time and see how well I can execute it and what I may do too is just to be kind of fun and fair is I'll, I'll actually show my first attempt at it and see how close I can get to nailing the technique without practicing because it's it's um I don't know you know like like I know everyone wants to show their best stuff, but again, skull right there. See it? It's the nose, cranium. But yeah, he hides that all over the place in there. And again, uh, one of my favorite, favorite designers is Storm Thorgerson, and um, he had a company named Hypnosis. And as a kid, I loved their album covers because he would do that all the time. There was all kinds of just cool little Easter eggs in the pieces, and I just think that's so fun. It's something that I really, really love. And uh, I've always done it in my art. There's always, always, always multiple layers of detail in my pieces that you can read a few different ways. If, if any of you guys are familiar with uh, how I snuck in that Darth Vader head on um, an album cover that I did for a band. And I mean, you would never in a million years be able to spot it 
Um, it's big too. It's not small. Um, and uh, it was from another drawing. I had drawn Darth Vader from my dad one time. And uh, yeah, I used it as part of the composition, and it was really cool. But man, look at that! And again, I've shown kind of how to do this. It's it's. Ow, I just stabbed myself with a nib. Um, this is just you know you do like lots of straight lines, and then just kind of go in and hit these areas a little harder, throw in a um, second little pass of detail. And he knows where he wants the value, though. That's the thing is, like, he's he's indicating form. God, these are great. I haven't seen this piece in so long. Man, that tree is so cool, too. I really want to do that Dracula book. You guys, let me know. I'm telling you. <laughs> you heard it here first on Super Fun Sunday. My dark secret. <laughs> I wish Bernie Wrightson was still alive. Man, it sucks he passed away. And he was doing really good work. That's the sad thing is, like, that last Frankenstein, I don't have it yet, but uh, the stuff I've seen online looks really good. It's a little different. Like, he didn't do as much, like, pen and ink detail on the stuff, but, uh, man, it's really beautiful. This is very Franklin Booth. Again, This, these clouds here with the lines going through it is just classic, classic Frank, Franklin Booth. Um, and beautifully done by Bernie. Again, when we pull back, we get that nice, distant read. Bam! I had this on my wall, too. I don't know. Do I still have it up? No, I took this down just recently, though. I had this up forever. It was kind of in a corner. I couldn't really see it that good all the time. But, uh, yeah, it had always been... Again, I, I sort of gravitated towards these more oddball pieces that had something a little different um, on it for the ones that I would hang on my wall. Like, I wouldn't always just go for, like, um, you know, the more predictable ones. But, man, this is so cool. Yeah, my Patreon, I'll, um, I'll throw up that Darth Vader thing that I was talking about so you could see what I'm talking about. But but I'll, I'll focus on rights in today, so don't worry. The, um, the the piece that I will post up today, and again, it's free to go check this stuff out. Um, I just put it on my Patreon. Um, uh, I use it like Tumblr or, or whatever. Just, you know, I like try to put things that correspond with the videos up there. And the pictures are bigger than Instagram, so it's a nice place to do it. This is a classic piece. Lots of books. And again, let me uh, zoom in here. Open edges on him always makes it look cool where he doesn't connect them. It's just the lines ending to create the edges, which is really, really cool. He even did it here. Look, there's no, there's no exterior line. There's a little bit there, but it's just the hatches. But again, he pencils the stuff tight enough where he knows where it's going to end. But... The lack of edges is really, really interesting. It's hard to do. It can look like a bunch of loose, unfinished edges. <laughs> oh, the irony of that statement, right? <laughs> it's true. Like, even this, it's like, man, so cool. But yeah, he didn't go in and, like, outline this, like, the, the edge of this, um, I don't know if it's a window or what it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Man, this is so cool. These skulls right here are really neat, too. Again, just li like the line work on them is so killer. Very cool lamp. Again, very loose, you know, very loose, very carefree. He's just drawn with the ink, putting tons of detail. It's wild. Wild, wild stuff. I don't want this to end. You know, somewhere, too, I don't know if it's in this book. Oh, yeah, these are the, like, the real classic ones. And again, I have a friend that owns one of these. I can't remember which one it was. I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah, yeah, I have one friend that owns one of these plates. I've seen at least five or six in person at San Diego Comic Con. There was an art dealer that had um, Barry Windsor Smith, Jeff Jones, um, and uh, some of these Frankenstein pieces. And uh, God, they were amazing. I snapped photos of them, but they're uh, they're on an external hard drive. I will fish those out though, but. Uh, yeah, if I if I find them, I'll share them because it's it is really really cool to see um, 
the pieces kind of in their their um, original state. And again, because these are actually like black and white scans, it's black and white art, but you understand what I'm saying. Everybody, I think, of course, without the cats, what does my phone do? It likes to update in the middle of videos. Try to update. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the difference between a black and white scan and an RGB scan is ink actually has a hue to it, meaning a slight color. It could be a little bit brown or beige or sepia. Sometimes it can drift to a bluish or a greenish sort of base. And also then you can see the white paint. So the big thing with like artist editions and um, the vault edition and uh, I don't know, all the different companies sort of do their own versions of them. Now I can't think of what the Frank Miller ones are called. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like scans off the original boards. This is a great piece, very classic. Probably one of the more iconic pieces. That is really interesting right there. That white area, the real light with the, the again, askew lines. It's very, very cool effect. Again, if you have an opportunity to check out Frank Laboo's stuff, this is beautiful right here, the lighting on that stuff. God, he was on fire when he did this stuff. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I love that, like, this will exist forever. I, I think as long as people are alive and are checking out literature, they're going to find this. And it needs to just keep being reprinted and put out for people to check out. I've never actually read the book with the art. I don't know if, if I would assume it's an abridged copy because the original book is, I think, about 280 some odd pages. And uh, I can't imagine that it was all. This is really interesting. I didn't notice that there was a. There, so there's a body here. But then the monster is right here. So he's he's been working on a few experiments. And so he's confusing. Frankenstein's not the monster, it's the doctor. Snooty people will call you on that if you mess up. <laughs> Come on, Frankenstein's a great name for the monster, too. Oh, yeah, this is great. Man. What a... Man, I'll tell you, like, like it's got to be a really, really rewarding feeling to do something like this. Have your friends all freaking out. Oh my god, you did a new Frankenstein plate? Let's see it. Then you break it out, and they're like, oh. <laughs> this is a nice scan of this piece, actually. Some of this stuff would be hard to reproduce, and these are pretty good. So again, my hope is that they had started to work on a project where they were going to do the Frankenstein artist edition and the problem was is they couldn't find a portion of the pieces I think about 25 of them they couldn't locate at uh, 25% um, and uh, you know I still think like who cares do it anyway print black and white nice copies of the other stuff and give us give us what you found I can't imagine anybody is going to be dissatisfied with a book that has you know 60 to 75% original scans of this stuff and then the rest is just you know nice large size reproductions i've seen books where they print them smaller when they're not the originals i don't like that i mean it's, it's like just keep the images consistent i paid for the book i don't need it small because it's not the original but that's just a an observation that i made on one of the books that i got because yeah any of the pages that weren't the originals they shrunk them down to like you know, almost smaller than a comic book page, if I remember correctly. It's kind of weird. This is great. Oh, Bernie, you were so awesome. Man, that's so cool. Look at the pants. It's got that little checkery thing again. Great textures. Man, just great value. Look at that. That's wild. That is really wild. That bottle, oh, it's got like that um, kind of wicker basket stuff wrapped around it. Look at that right there. They've been wood carving. That's beautiful. Dude was creative. Whew. Man. So great. Oh, man, look at that. That's a dark piece. Again, just that little little patch of like, like a square. Oh, I guess maybe, maybe it's like the mast had, had a rip in it or something. Yeah, I don't even remember this piece. Really cool. I wonder... It, it, yeah, man, I wish... Uh, 
I'd love to read some interviews on um, how he won, went about this. Two, legally doing it at the time. And three, how he picked which plates he was going to do. You know, which which pieces. I would assume he just read the story and picked out his, you know, what he thought would move the story along. But, um, yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting to imagine the process that it went through. You know, the, the guy that I would love to talk to, I was actually going to look and see if he's on social media. Because he seems like a really friendly and outgoing guy based on the Frazetta documentary. is Michael Kaluta. Um, and uh, he, luckily he's still with us. We've lost Jeffrey Catherine Jones and Bernie is gone. Um, Barry Windsor Smith just doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't seem as approachable. But yeah, Kaluta seems like a real nice guy. It would be fun to talk to him um, not only about his own work, but uh, it, would be, it would be cool to kind of pick his brain about like what was going on during this period. Because I would assume that Wrightson was at the studio at least for a few of these pieces. So... And actually, there's pieces that Michael Kaluta inked in this style over Bernie's pencils. I saw one the other day when I was looking through art. This is really nice. Again, that, that kind of dotted technique. You can see it a little more clearly here. Do you see how the lines cross? Really, really cool. Dracula. <laughs> You didn't hear that from me. Should we do it? What do you guys think? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me in the comments below. I'd be like Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> I know I just made James laugh. We've been talking about Greta Van Fleet. He sent me a link to them playing at Coachella. They're a very controversial band because they're they're very Led Zeppelin-y. It's ironic because Led Zeppelin was, and they're one of my favorite bands. But come on, Led Zeppelin—they they borrowed, <laughs> they borrowed quite a bit from other artists themselves. And Greta Van Fleet—they're they're a young band. All those guys are like 21, around that age. They're pretty—they're you know, it's like they're getting thrown into like sort of like a hornet's nest. Man, that is nice. I don't remember this piece either. So when I tell you, when I do these open that books, I haven't seen some of these things in a long time. It's not an exaggeration. We've got a bird singing songs to us while we uh, look at the book. I'm very, very happy. It's having a super fun Sunday, too. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll just go through this book and pick a few techniques, and we'll start, we'll start knocking them out. Um, I'll try to do, like, two this week. I, I definitely, I need to get back onto my uh, comic uh, thing and... Uh, is, this, is that it? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. What a trip. So th that was interesting. Oh, no, that was Dracula. Never mind. I was watching some YouTube videos on Dracula, sort of like feeding my imagination on that whole idea. And um, someone had done a story. It may have, may have been one of the Hammer films. And uh, they killed Dracula over the ice in that story. Let's pull back and see this one. Wow, that's really cool. God dang. That's so dope. Man, that's really cool. Really cool lighting. Man, that is nice. Ooh. I actually use this technique quite a bit. I I got it um, from Franklin Booth, but uh, same idea. It was was interesting because I think at some point I got really into Frazetta, and Fred is, Frazetta started to send me backwards. I don't know what it was about Frank's stuff, but but I immediately got more curious about fine art when I got into Frazetta, and um, I just started going back and back and back, and and uh, I discovered a ton of stuff based on that but Franklin Booth I came upon I think looking at maybe the beginning of a look back like but that was a real old book for me one of my first actual art books that I got and um I really it was a shot I think of these like African guys with elephants if I'm not mistaken 
um, maybe like Hunters or something like that. And uh, yeah, I was like, okay, I need to see who this Franklin Booth guy was because it was really cool. In fact, at the end of the video, I'll show you really fast something. Yeah, that's really cool. God, man. That's so crazy. Love how he does the hands. It's tough to do and actually still have some definition of, of the hand itself up here. He got some really cool stuff too. Man, after this, like, dude, he must have just dropped the mic. <laughs> it's like, last plate's done, drops the mic. Good luck, kids. Have fun trying to do something this good. <laughs> it's really cool that he was able to stick, stick it out too because... Uh, I know sometimes people get in over their head with this stuff and you start something and it's just too much. It overwhelms them and becomes, uh, I mean, look, imagine getting up for each one of these pieces. You know you're digging in for weeks. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Oh, and again, he's got something that will stand the test of time. I think that's it. Okay, that's it. So um, here, let me pause this for one sec. This is a little... A little bonus thing so someone had asked me about Franklin Booth if I had these books and I do um, so Franklin Booth American Illustrator um, these are really difficult I guess to find and quite expensive now but um, then here's Franklin Booth painter with pen but you can see really really fast kind of the similarities between what Wrightson did and Booth stuff um, and like I said, Franklin Booth is, is really, really one of my favorite, favorite artists of all time. So I think his stuff is just incredible. Um, and again, it's not just his ability with pen and ink, but it's, it's, he really, really could draw beautifully. There's lots of little spot illustrations and full size things. It's really, really nice. Sorry, it's gonna, I, like, I got too many books on my desk to really probably go through this. But, uh, let me just give you a little taste. Yeah, this stuff is really, really detailed. But anyway, yeah, you should definitely keep your eyes peeled for for um, the Booth books because they are cool. But again, they're like the ones I saw were three hundred and sixty-five dollars for these, which is crazy because I got them for cover price back not even that long ago. Honestly, I'm not even exaggerating. Um, so this one was originally. I doesn't even say on the back. It couldn't have been that much. Oh, look, see, Frank Cho. I mean, that just shows you how that it couldn't have been that long ago. And then this one. It's funny, they don't have the prices on the back. Oh, $24.95. But yeah, this book, one guy was asking $1,700 for this. And I saw it on eBay for about $365. And someone had sold one for close to $100. I don't know if it was damaged or something. But okay, anyway, smash the like. Check out the links in the description below for Patreon, for links to. Um, other render like rights in introductions to this um to open that book and uh have a great day and uh let me know about my harebrained scheme tell me what you think <laughs> all right bye